Hello viewers, welcome to this video. So this video is about um, running your Kubernetes cluster in LXC containers. Yeah, I've got the spelling right. All right, so I've done a video on how to provision your Kubernetes cluster on Linux containers, LXC containers. That was a while ago. Let me search for that. If you go to youtube.com and then search for Kubernetes LXC, and yeah, that's the one K does clusters in the LXC container. So that was done like nine months ago. And I've had um, had it working until Kubernetes version 1.14.3. And since uh, version 1.15 and above, I couldn't get uh, this one working, Kubernetes working in LXC containers. So during the Kubernetes uh, init phase, sorry, the kubeadm init phase, it kept failing for some reason. The kubelet never comes up. It always has problems and so on. And then I finally decided to dig deeper and then find what the problem is. Um, I think I've got the uh, problem sorted. Maybe it's a workaround or it's a hack, but I'm going to show you how to run uh, the latest Kubernetes, which is 1.17.0, I believe, um, uh, in your LXE containers. All right, cool. Okay, so LXE list. And if you want to know about uh, Linux containers, I've done that one as well. If you look here, getting started with the LXC containers. So that's one thing and there should be another video about LXC. Okay, so that's getting started with the LXC containers and I've also done a video on um, LXC profiles. So if I search for getting started with LXC, yeah, that's the video I was talking about and then further down here, uh, this video, Linux containers, LXC, beginner's guide on using LXC profiles. All right, so those are the three videos I did around LXC and now let's um, do it. Uh, I haven't got any LXC machines and uh, LXC profile list. I've already have my K8 test profile. And if I show this profile, LXC profile show K8 test. So that's my profile, I'm setting the CPU um, all the LXC containers um, I'm creating using this KDS profile will have like two CPU, two gig of memory, uh, some kernel modules enabled and so on. Um, nested security with privileged and everything is turned on. Okay, so that's the profile and I'm going to clone my Kubernetes repository. Git clone Kubernetes cd to kubernetes and then to lxd provisioning okay so here i've got two files so k is profile dash config so that's the k is profile file if i do um k is profile config it's the same file uh the same uh profile configuration that i've got so if you if you don't have a k is profile it's better to create a profile um for example you can do this lxc profile create hello just give it a name or you can call it uh kubernetes profile profile is created now we can edit the profile lxc profile edit kubernetes delete everything and then just copy uh this file uh the content of this file from my github repository and make sure to name uh change the name name is k8s because you might have created it with a different name. Okay, so that's KDS profile which you need to create. And now we are going to launch a couple of containers. The first one will be um, LXC. And let me show you the actual uh, workaround that I did. So in here, I've updated the bootstrap uh, shell script. Uh, if I show you this shell script, VI bootstrap cube.shell it's everything is exactly the same but you will notice a couple of differences and i'm still using the same docker uh, version 18.6 18.06 and everything is the same and if you look this line um, i'm installing 1.17.0 version of kubeadm kubelet and kubectl and finally uh, the hack that i had to do was this line here yep um I was looking at the kubelet logs why it was not coming online and there were many errors and one of one of the errors was something to do with dev k message so that got my attention and i after a bit of googling and i found this workaround which seemed to be 
working otherwise everything is uh, the same okay so now I'm going to launch a couple of LXC containers one for K master and one for K worker let's start it LXC launch images CentOS 7 CentOS what CentOS 7 I've got in my history anyway CentOS 7 and let's call it K master so I'm launching a CentOS 7 LXE container and I'm applying the profile k which I created earlier. All right, All right, let's start this container. All right, the container should be running now. LXE list, yep, that's running. It has got an IP address. Let's also start another container for our worker node. So LXE launch images, CentOS 7, everything is the same except the name which is going to be k worker that's it let's start this container okay now lxe list cool so we've got two containers linux containers k master and k worker and if you still see here that's my memory utilization 1.47 gig and that's because uh, the lxe containers doesn't actually get those uh, memories and lxe profile show so basically I've set the uh, memory the maximum memory my Linux containers can use is like 2 gig so that doesn't mean it's going to take 2 gigs out of my host machine uh, because if it were to do that then I've deployed a couple of LXE containers both with the same 2 gig memory profile so that would have taken like 4 gig out of my host machine but my host machine is still using 1.48 gig so that's the beauty of LXE containers all right so it, it uses the host memory and it can use up to two gig of memory it doesn't just get the memory from your host system okay so lxe list i'm sorry lxe list two machines and if you're in my github directory the bootstrap script i'm going to run this bootstrap script on the k master first and then on the k worker let's try and run so cat bootstrap cube.shell and pipe that to Alexi exec k master bash all right so it's going to go and uh, provision the kubernetes cluster it's going to set up all the um, tasks required to be run on the kubernetes master node like kubeadm init command generating the uh, cluster joining command uh, joining tokens and so on and then we will run exactly the same command um, on our k worker node and then we need to copy the cube config file from uh, the k master and then we will see if our cluster is working fine so if everything goes well we should be having a cluster with 1.17.0 all right cool um, i'm gonna pause the video and come back when it has done this command it's gonna take like a couple of minutes or uh, like yeah all right so the command completed so now let's tell um, let's uh, run the same script on uh, kworker. So cat bootstrap dash cube dot shell and now let's run it in kworker. That's again going to take like a couple of minutes. I'm going to pause the video and come back when it's ready. All right, so uh, the command completed successfully on kworker as well. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a directory called dot q. You might, uh, you all might be knowing about this directory. So this is the directory where you have your cube config file. So make directory dot cube. It's on your. It's on the top level of your home directory. So if I do um, home venkatian and I've got the dot cube directory. So now I'm going to copy uh, what is called the cube config file etc kubernetes admin dot file. So that's the file. Um, I'm going to copy this file from the K master to my local machine under dot cube directory. Okay, so since I'm running um, the LXC containers, there is an easy way instead of doing an SSH or SCP, uh, there is an easy way to uh, pull the pull files from your LXC containers. Or if you've got local files that you want to push inside your LXC containers, there is this command called LXC file push lxe file so file pull command i can do lxe file pull minus minus help um, lxe file pull the container name and the path and then the local path okay 
LXC file pull kmaster slash etc kubernetes slash admin dot conf that's the file I want to download from my kmaster to dot cube slash config that's done dot cube okay I've got my config file there and now we should be able to I've got my kubectl kubectl version minus minus shot cool so client version is 1.17.0 and the server version is also 1.17.0 kubectl cluster info cool so that's our cluster that's running fine um, the clusters IP address is 10.5.95.119 if I do LXE list that should be the IP address of my master machine uh, which is here 10.5.95.119 so our cluster is working fine kubectl get nodes okay so we've got two nodes k master k worker uh, that's the master that's the worker node and we are on version 1.17.0 that's cool kubectl config view everything is working fine let's also do a quick um, uh, nginx deployment to see if it's all working fine so that's the component status that's all looking healthy kubectl get all okay kubectl minus n cube system get all right um all of them are running api server controller manager flannel is the default overlay network by the way uh in my bootstrap script i've used flannel to be the overlay network all right kubectl run nginx minus minus image nginx replicas 2 that's created kubectl get all all right for nginx containers are getting created kubectl get all watch minus x kubectl get all cool nginx pods are running fine and let's see if we can access it kubectl expose deploy nginx minus minus port 80 minus minus type is let's call it node port kubectl get service all right so um one of our um the ip address of one of our nodes are we can use the k worker node here the ip address is that one copy that and if we do do i have curl i should be having it yep curl and ip address of one of my worker node colon the node port is three two two six one Cool, so that's our welcome page for Nginx. Everything is working fine. kubectl delete deploy Nginx. kubectl delete service Nginx. kubectl get all. Cool, so that's all I wanted to show you in this video. I'm, um, I've got questions, I've got requests from few users that um, the, the question is about why Alexi is not working with the latest version of Kubernetes and so on. Um, so I wanted to dig deeper to find and resolve this issue, which I managed to do uh, through a workaround. So you guys, those those who have asked for me for this workaround should be happy now. And please continue using LXC containers for your Kubernetes. In fact, I'm going to use, I'm going to start using LXC containers for my worker node. Since it, since it was broken a uh, long time ago and I was using my virtual machines for uh, for my local environment. So now I'm going to switch back to using the LXC containers, which by the way, I like very much. All right, so thank you so much for your time watching this video. If you've got any questions or any issues following this video, please let me know and I'll be happy to help you. Uh, and I will see you all in my next video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Bye-bye.